At Northrop Grumman, innovation isn't just an idea. It's a way of life. The value of performance. Northrop Grumman. So my name is Melina Bellows, and I have the coolest job in the world. And this is what I wear every day to work, only kidding, but this is my duct tape dress. This dress is made out of 400 different pieces of duct tape, and I wore it to Destination Imagination last year. So I don't wear this to work every single day, but I am not kidding when I say I have the coolest job in the world, and that is because I make magazines and books and experiences for you guys. So a typical day on the job for someone at National Geographic can look like something like this. We are a 126 year old organization that has a scientific core. So every single thing we do, whether it's a TV show, a magazine or a book, there's science at our core. And because of that, we have explorers and adventures and scientists all around the world. And at any given day, there's 350 people in the world not only seeing things that we haven't seen, but bringing their stories and photographs back to, so I, we can share the stories with you. This is a picture of Paul Nicklin, who made friends with the seal, and I will, telling you, I will be telling you a little bit about Paul and his adventure a little bit later. So, I am not a scientist or a mathematician or an engineer. As a matter of fact, I'm a journalist, and I used to be an entertainment journalist before I got this job, and it was really fun to interview celebrities. But all that changed when I traded divas for dinosaurs, and I started working at National Geographic Kids. This was 14 years ago. And at National Geographic, we, um, we do everything that we can to teach kids, and teach kids in a way that they want to learn. And when I started the magazine, uh, the magazine looks something like this. Now, I, I am sure everybody in this room has heard, clean up your room by your mother or father. Is that right? Well, when I got to National Geographic, we were making a magazine that looked like it was the 1970s. And you guys, who have iPads and computers and all these sophisticated things to look at and watch, were like, uh-uh, not good enough. So we took a magazine that looked like this, and we changed it into something that looks like this. So let's hope you like the one on the, with the fox on a little bit better than the electric Christmas tree, right? Okay, so how did we do that? We did it by asking the experts what they wanted. We did it by using the scientific method. We did it by research and data. We did it by smiley faces and frowny faces. And here's what we did. We sent 2,000 of you guys a report card every month with the magazine and a dollar bill. And you got to keep that dollar bill, but you had to send back the report card. And you were grading us on every single image in the magazine and every single article in the magazine. And when we got all that data from all of you all around the country, two or three, two or three thousand of you, it was very, very clear what you liked and what you didn't like. Because when you love something, it got all smiles. And when you're not so much, in the middle. And when you didn't like it, frowny faces. So we learned by trial and error how to make geography, exploration, and learning about the world fun for you because you told us how to do it. Over the years, we came up with a secret recipe, which I'm going to share with you today. Photos, facts, fun, and all things animal. So we use this proven formula to make science fun and come alive. And I'll break it down for you. Photos. Everyone has heard the, the term uh, photograph is worth a thousand words, right? Well, as you can see, as you know, National Geographic sends people out in the world to take incredible photographs. And this is a photograph um, of a blue hole. A blue hole is an enormous cave down in the ocean. And it is so big that you could fit a six-story building inside of this blue hole. Here's a picture of a cave in Vietnam. It's the world's largest cave. You can, you can fit an entire New York City block inside of this cave. Think about an entire New York City block that could fit inside of this cave. We have a photographer named Karsten Peters. He likes to jump in and out of volcanoes just for fun to take pictures. Don't try that at home. And he took this picture. So now it comes to facts. We have something called Weird But True. Has anyone seen any of our Weird But True books? Yay! Thank you! This, you guys are why I still have a job. Weird But True are a collection of facts, and they are just fun to know. So 
Did you know that more than 950 beetles can live in a sloth's fur at one time? Makes the lice epidemic a little less serious at your school, right? There is no land on Saturn. Well, how does it keep together? Gases. Your heart is a pump, and your heart pumps enough blood in a day to fill 40 bathtubs, as is lemons can power light bulbs. There's just something to know about these facts. And when you have one of, your, one of these books, you can absolutely amaze your parents at the dinner table. Just keep the book under, your, under the table so they can't see it and just start spitting out these facts and you, you will have some impressed parents, believe me. Because my kids do it to me at the dinner table and I'm like, I don't really believe that. And they're like, mom, weird but true. Another way we teach is through fun. We find out what you guys are interested in, whether it's Harry Potter or SpongeBob SquarePants, and we teach you about the real world using science, engineering, and technology. So this is a story that looks like it's about Harry Potter, but actually, how the Harry Potter movies are made have everything to do with science. The digital anim animation is all about science and technology. Computers are used to make the effects and animations. Engineers build things that just do not exist in, in the real world. And also, as we know, those, those explosions, there has to be a lot of chemistry involved. And so what we like to do is take something that's entertaining, like a movie or a TV show, and tell you the truth behind it. So here we have the truth behind your favorite stars. And we always sneak in those extra little facts. For example, with Spider-Man, did you know that an arachnid has brains in its feet? But we love our animals closer to home, too. OK, so who in the room thinks dogs are smarter? Raise your hand. OK, cat people. Who thinks cat are smarter? cats are smarter? Well, I have stories to prove it both ways, because Shonda Lee is a 10-year-old po poodle who can play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star on the piano. Now, not to be outdone by Simba the cat, who one day, out of the blue, started acting really, really weird, and she kept slamming herself against her garage door, and their owner was like, what's up, Simba? And she kept doing it and doing it and doing it. Finally, the owner walked over to the garage. She realized the garage was filled with smoke, and her son was in there nearly suffocating. So Simba the cat knew not only that there was something wrong, but knew to go get the mom to go and save the sun. Now, I just think dogs and cats are just amazing, whether you're a dog, cat, dog person or a cat person. And what really brings all of our stories alive are, are explorers that go out into the field and have these adventures. So here's a, here's a picture of Paul Nicklin I showed you a little bit earlier. So Paul Nicklin went to Antarctica to study the leopard seals. Now, leopard seals are highly, highly, highly dangerous animals. Not many people have taken pictures of them before. But Paul decided that he was passionate about this and he wanted to go do this. So he went out to Antarctica. He sat in the frigid cold water beneath the ice caps for four days, no seals. He's like, OK, I'm out of here. I'm going back to my warm country of Canada. And I gave it a try. Then this huge leopard seal came up to him, and he was like, oh no, my dream has come true, but here's this leopard seal, and is, is she going to eat me? And she made these big row, 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 display noises, and he got very scared and very still, and he just kept his camera on her, and she didn't know what to make of him, so she kept swimming him around him and swimming around him, and then she went and got a penguin, and took the penguin and did this, and then presented it to him. So she gave him the penguin because leopard seals eat penguins, and she thought he didn't know how to feed himself because he was just standing there like a <laughs> dummy. And she gave him a penguin. He didn't take the penguin, of course. He's like looking at, you know, he's looking at her through the camera, being very, very still. This went on for three days. She kept bringing him penguins. At one point, one of his pictures, it looks like she's trying to stuff the penguin into the lens of the camera because she's like, if you don't know how to feed yourself, I'm just going to have to feed, feed you myself. So on the last day that he was shooting her, so now they're sort of used to each other. The last day he's shooting her, the leopard seal comes up, and she makes this huge display in front of him. And he realizes, oh my gosh, I have pushed it too much. We're not supposed to be in the animal kingdom. And I've sort of made friends with this leopard seal. And I sort of love her, but I got to say goodbye. And now she's just going to kill me. And he turned around, and what he didn't know was another leopard seal was coming up behind him to attack him, and she saved his life. 
just an incredible thing. Like he, you know, he just said that that, that experience changed him forever. So what I'm so proud to, one of the reasons I'm so proud to work at National Geographic is we're, we're, we have these people who are so passionate about what they do that they go out there, they risk their lives, but they make sure they bring the story home in photographs and telling the story with all the scientific data so we understand the world better. Sylvia, Sylvia Earle is so cool and she's here at the conference, so if you get the chance to go watch her lecture, please do. She's not only an oceanographer and the former chief of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, but we call her her deepness. And that's because Sylvia Earle has gone on over 100 ocean expeditions setting a record. And it's because of people like Sylvia that we understand what's going on in the oceans and we will be able to preserve our world, our natural world, and all that's in it. Jane Goodall's a primatologist, but when she first went out into the field, in Tanzania's Gombe National Park. She was not a scientist at that time. She just was curious and she went out there. And over the years, she went back and she studied. And her work with chimpanzees has made us understand them like never before. She was the first, people, first person to witness them eating meat, uh, using tools, and making tools. So the, this was a huge discovery back in the day. OK, James Cameron, who here has heard of him? Titanic, Avatar. Well, one thing you might know about him is that even more passionate about making, about making movies, he is about ocean exploration. And last year, he went down to Ch and Challenger Deep to the deepest place in the ocean, the Marianas Trench. He went seven miles down in the ocean. Never before has anyone gone to a deeper place. So these people are incredibly cool. But the only people cooler than these people are you guys, because you are our next generation of explorers. This is what you guys do. You send us things like your old sneakers. And what we do is we create Guinness World Records with your participation. Has anyone here heard of a Guinness World Record? Has anyone here set a Guinness World Record? OK, National Geographic Kids. If you're a National Geographic Kid reader, you know that you have set eight Guinness World Records. And this was a record for the largest collection of stinky sneakers. And you guys sent us all, I mean, we got a box this big where somebody did a drive in their school. I got to say, this box smelled a little bit in our garage. But it was awesome because instead of these sneakers winding up in a landfill, the guy from Guinness World Records, Stuart Claxton, came and he counted them with a clicker. One, two, three, 10,932 sneakers. And we teamed up with Nike's Reuse a Shoe program and we shipped off all the sneakers once we set our record to Nike and they made seven playgrounds for disadvantaged kids who didn't have any playgrounds in their areas. They used all that rubber to make really cool playgrounds. And that's all thanks to what you did. So this was our record for um, sneakers. And here at the conference tomorrow, we will be setting our ninth Guinness World Record with IBM, and they are making the world's smallest magazine cover. Kids like you voted which one it would be. Tomorrow we will do that reveal, I think at 9 o'clock in the morning. And this magazine cover is so, is so nano-sized that 2,000 of them can fit on one grain of sand. That's pretty small. So that's the record that we're going to set tomorrow. And I will leave you on a record that we sent two years ago with Mrs. Obama at the White House. And we wanted people to do jumping jacks all over the world at the same time. And we asked Mrs. Obama to be our official jumper in chief. And she said, sure, let's do it on the white lawn. So we had so much fun this day setting the Guinness World Record with her. And I'm going to click to play this video and show you how we got everyone involved.
what I'm so excited about is you are the next generation of explorers, and you are the next generation of scientists and adventurers, and you guys are the ones who are going to change the world next. So it's a pleasure to be before you today. Thank you very much.